the Black Studies program at Cleveland State University welcomes you to this season of Images, a public affairs radio forum dedicated to open dialogue on a variety of diverse topics of interest and issues of concern which focus on the life and experiences of African Americans and all peoples of African descent by visiting our website at www.csuohio.edu slash black studies and clicking on the images link, you can view upcoming shows and listen to past guests. Now here is your host for Images. Welcome to Images. We have an exciting guest with, uh, with us in the studio today. He's a Cleveland native. He's a graduate of East Tech, one of the first people class to attend the new East Tech, uh, 1973, I believe it was, in that period of time. He's an author, he's a self-publisher, and he's written a fascinating book called 360 Degrees of Shame, Blame, and Pain for Profit. The subtitle, From the Gavel to the Stick, uh, to the pulpit of Calgary County, Cleveland's untold story of corruption and racketeering. Uh, we have in the studio, and help us welcome Ralph Watts Jr. Welcome to Images, Ralph. It's an honor and a pleasure to be in your comedy mm-hmm. and in the company of your listeners. You know, when I, f- I first met you earlier today, uh, and when we talk about today, we met him on a Thursday, and we're talking to you guys. You will hear this program either on Wednesday or Sunday. Uh, he was most gracious to come into the studio with short notice, and, and I, when I saw his book, I said, we got to get this on the air and got to give this brother some, some publicity in terms of the things that he's doing. He's written a, a, a book. And I have to tell you, you have to see the book, 846 pages that he's compiled, um, not just of facts, titles, and all that, but he's poured out his life story, his autobiography, but it talks a lot about the bail bondsman industry and what's going on in there. And he has some concerns and some issues that he wants to raise with that. And and, and also we'll talk to you a little bit later about how you can get involved. Ralph, before we start with um, your book, tell us a little bit about you and a little bit about who you are and background. Well, um, first of all, I was born and raised, and I'm a native of Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, I've been here all my life, and uh, I've experienced a wide range of encounters and growing up in Cleveland, uh, values that my neighbors have actually instilled in me, as well as uh, my parents. And uh, at this particular time of writing this book, I drew on all of those values and all those challenges that uh, I had experienced over the period of years. And I decided to commit them to the book. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been uh, uh, in a home where there's tremendous turmoil, and I thought that story needed to be told. Uh, mm-hmm. I overcame that situation. Uh, I'm substance abuse. I've been sober 24 years. There was substance abuse in my home, mm-hmm. and I was able to overcome that experience, and I was stronger because of it. And those were small steps of success that I was able to uh, actually embrace, and, and, and it was able to uh, allow me to say that I had some self-worth. Uh, from there, um, I went to the service and stayed there for a year. I left the service. Uh, um, uh, and then from that point, I worked with the school board for about uh, eight years. And then I decided to follow my dreams, which was to become a bail bondsman. I had never sold insurance bail bond products mm-hmm. before. No one in my family was ever a bail bondsman. But I, I decided to follow my dreams. Instead of being a- affected by my, by my society and the adverse cir- circumstances that I was challenged by, I decided I decided to pursue my dreams and I succeeded beyond my wildest imaginations mm-hmm. to the point of earning twenty thousand dollars doing it part time to two hundred thousand dollars owning my own company to four hundred upwards of four hundred thousand uh, uh, dollars in terms of owning my own company. I had three lovely secretaries with I, which I would have never been able to achieve the success I did in the bail bond industry had it not been for the support system. And speaking of the support system, the, the exchange that I had with the public and, and my clients was just phenomenal. It, it, it charged me, it re-energized me, and consequently, after achieving such amount of success, unfortunately, I ran into political forces, powers, and uh, elected officials that felt as though that money that and the success that I achieved, uh, honestly, in terms of making that money and in, in terms of uh, 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 having those uh, uh, victories, uh, that money should have been theirs. And that's actually when uh, things just really went haywire in terms of me feeling the brunt of their power, their connection, their affiliation, and the lengths that they would that they would go to in terms of uh, getting uh, 
the, that money any way that they possibly can. And so I wrote the book uh, after going through that entire experience, when, and it was called 360 Degrees. When you uh, talk about that experience, and one of the things you were, it really, I was really impressed with, but the, your dedication to writing this book in the sense of, because you said, did you spend how long putting this book together and the conditions under which you put the book together? Actually, after going through um, the experience of, um, of feeling the wrath of the political figures that that were trying that actually tried to destroy me, mm-hmm. so they could have that money. I, I retreated from the bail bond industry, and I actually um, secluded myself and and in my attic for five years to write this book. I mm-hmm. um, ate ramen noodles and hot sauce on ramen noodles to give it a little flavor. Okay. And I my favorite sandwich was what I call a sandwich royale, and that's heavy on the peanut butter and light on the jelly. Okay. And uh, I, I didn't have a penny after all the money that I'd earned. I uh, I had to use it in defense of. Uh, uh, of, of trying to stay in business, so I, I, my financial resources were drained. But I spent five years writing this book, secluded in the attic. The only reason that I came out of the attic uh, when I wasn't writing was to do a volunteer reentry and recovery program, where uh, I hold sessions for men coming out of the penitentiary, mm-hmm. and it's a faith-based initiative where we use biblical concepts uh, to to uh, share with the men to let them know. Uh, that we can how to apply these concepts in real life situations so they can uh, become empowered, encouraged, and enlightened, and also pursue their dreams based on tr- uh, real life situations and circumstances and examples that we draw from from the scriptures and from the Bible itself. And it seems mm-hmm. to be working real well mm-hmm. uh, at the three sites where I facilitate mm-hmm. the seven and seventy extreme mm-hmm. men's ministry. And when we talk about that, we're going to come back to your book and, and the things you talk about. But I want to share with the audience in terms of. You said you began to follow your dream of becoming a bail bondsman. How did you know that that's what you really wanted to do when you was a kid and growing up? Well, um, strange as it may seem, as a kid, because I didn't have many role models in my community, uh, I really wanted to be a garbage man. Okay. I mean, mm-hmm. those guys seem to have fun. Mm-hmm. They, they seem to um, always be happy, and they had money. Those mm-hmm. were my role models that I saw as they would mm-hmm. come up and down the street. Mm-hmm. However, as um uh, I um, Asian. I beca- as I said, I, I became a custodian. One day, I was at an in service at Max Hayes here in Cleveland, Ohio, and we were studying about traps and building maintenance. And something on the inside of me said, "You don't want to do this for the rest of your mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. That you want to be a bail bondsman." So when I left that in service, which is also included in my book, I decided to go and see about what would it take to become a bail bondsman. It's just something that was in my spirit, in my mind, and I thought I'd pursue it. However, there was one bail bonds, and I can remember as a child on 92nd in St. Clair. His name was Sonny Wilcox, and he rode around in a pink uh, Mercedes Benz, and that must have been about in 68. Okay. And so I saw success written all over Sonny every time he would ride down the street. How that notion or that ideal or that spirit hit me at that particular time, I'm not aware of, but mm-hmm. I, I thought that I'd pursue it, and I did. Mm-hmm. And that's exciting because sometimes we don't know where those inspirations come from, but we know they come. Yes. And then we know that there are things that we want to to do as children. And sometimes as adults, we don't follow our dreams. And then we go through our whole life and then we look back and say, I wish I should have, could have. So you had that inspiration and then you had the courage to follow that. Um, we you know, one of the things that I find exciting about this book, you know, in terms of um, you're beginning to talk about being a Bell's Bondman. What's, what was involved with that for you? Well, um, as as strange as it may seem to the public, uh, I like to say my business was was making people comfortable, putting putting them on their feet mm-hmm. and pointing them in the right direction uh, in in a time in their life when they couldn't when they couldn't make themselves comfortable and they seemed to be off the beaten path. So m- my uh, my inspiration and and uh, uh, what really uh, my my what motivated me was was to uh, uh, just to to, to Share my strength, experience, and hope in terms of, as I said, I had been sober for 24 mm. years, as well as to uh, provide a, a platform in, in terms of allowing people to get out of jail mm. and to and to resume some sort of normal course of life again. Mm-hmm. So um, that that was basically um, what that's basically what motivated me to do it, to, just to share my strength and hope mm. and to give the resources that I knew was available uh, in, in terms of the bail bond industry. To, to my clients so they could be uh, a resume some sort of normal mm-hmm. uh, uh, activity a normal life again mm-hmm. while they were out while they while they were out on bond when we return back uh we'll, we'll come back with our special guest today uh ralph watts jr uh, he's a cleveland native and he's the author of 360 degrees of shame blame and pain 
uh, for profit. And we're going to talk about this exciting book and what's involved in the Bell's Bondsman. We're going to talk about what happened with him in the Bell's, uh, as being a Bell's Bond and some of those forces that he had to deal with. And you, so you're going to hear a very, a very uh, strong individual who fought against all odds. And, and now he's here with this book. So we're going to see you guys on the other side of these messages. Established in 1969, the Black Studies program at Cleveland State University is currently comprised of six instruments used to implement the program's mission to contribute knowledge, promote understanding, and to share with all generations and all cultures the rich legacy of the African diaspora. First, there is the academic program, an interdisciplinary curriculum of nearly 80 courses offering a minor in Black Studies and soon-to-be-completed major. The MIMS African American Culture Center is open to the public and features art exhibits, programs, a colloquium series, panel discussions, and roundtables. The lecture art and media series brings international, national, and local speakers, artists, and films to the campus. Images, a public affairs radio forum, interviews guests from many fields of endeavor. The Jazz Heritage Orchestra is a professional 16-piece orchestra comprised of musicians who are also educators officially in residence at CSU. The Jazz Heritage Orchestra is dedicated to preserving and perpetuating the musical heritage of the great African-American jazz masters. They are available for performance engagements. Finally, the Black Aspiration Celebration is a week-long event of cultural arts and contemporary issues. Dr. Michael R. Williams is a director. Prester Pickett is coordinator of the Culture Center and assistant to the director. Dennis Reynolds is music director of the Jazz Heritage Orchestra. Patricia Washington is secretary. And Vivian L. Sharp is the announcer. And now, back to Images. We're back on Images with our very special guest, Ralph Watts, Jr., the author of 360 Degrees of Shame, Blame, and Pain for Profit. And and before we go back to our, our author, we want to have a couple of announcements to be made. One, on October 2nd, Jazz Heritage Orchestra will be performing at, Oak, in, at Oakwood Village, in Oakwood Village, rather, at Mount Zion Church at 7 p.m. Uh, you can call 687-3655 for additional information regarding the performance at Oak, in Oakwood Village at Mount Zion Church. Uh, second our announcement is that on October 6th at noon in Wagen Auditorium, Cardinal Francis Arizi will be here. Uh, he's one of the he's a Nigerian cardinal who was one of the three finalists to become pope uh, in the last in the last conclave. So we're going to look for those events. You can call uh, Black Studies and get more information regarding that event at 687-3655 and that's area code 216. There's a host of other activities going on between now and December and those that, that information can be obtained in Black Studies. But now we're going to return back to our guests. As you put this book together and just based on your experiences um, in the industry, what were some of the obstacles, challenges that you faced that led you from 200,000, 400,000 to a fight for survival? Well, um, you, you have to understand, prior to me achieving that type of success, those revenues were actually going to a predetermined uh, um, segment of the bail bond industry that were affiliated with judges as well as with the sheriff department as well as with the Ohio Department of Insurance. And uh, upon achieving that success, actually, I began to interfere and actually to, re to receive some of that money. And, and there were those individuals, including judges, as well as the individuals that I just mentioned, that felt that they were duty bound to, uh, to see that, I, uh, that the money that I made went again uh, to those individuals that they, had all, that they had predetermined should be the rightful recipients of that money. And uh, they immediately began to put pressure on me in various ways through various means, including laws that they applied through double standards mm -hmm. to, to stunt, to hinder and to hamper uh, and to. Uh, and I would have to say this uh, in all honesty, to blackmail me and to make me pay to play to stay in business. And it was impossible to meet the laws that they act, they enacted new laws to prevent me to con to continue from continuing to receive uh, the type of benefits financially, mm -hmm. $200,000, $400,000 mm -hmm. a year, uh, 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 to continue to receive that type of money. And in doing so, that money would, would be redirected to those individuals whom they uh, embrace within, with, uh, th within their political affiliation. Mm -hmm. They say power corrupts and absolute power corrupts mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so 
the essence of it is that I ran into a chainsaw of corruption from judges to the sheriff's department through the Ohio Department of Insurance, and it continued until they uh, decided to, uh, uh, to 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 totally uh, uh, to take my license actually.